Hi, my name is Gary Krupa. I'm the Vice President of Proteomics at Bruker Dolphonics. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to present here at the Advances in Proteomics and Metabolomics 2021 online symposium. I'd like to take my time here to tell you a little bit about the latest applications of 4D proteomics using trapped ion mobility on the TIMSTOF Pro 2. On this slide, I want to remind you of the history of the instrument. We, it's hard to believe, but we introduced the Timstoff Pro just a, a little under four short years ago at the International HUPO Congress in Dublin in 2017. And at that time, it was only really capable of DDA uh, workflows with label-free quant. Uh, and over the course of the next few years into 2020, we introduced uh, DIA and, and PRM workflows, which I'll tell you a bit more about and as well introduced a versions of the instrument with a MALDI source uh, that could be used for MALDI imaging. And just a, a little over a month ago uh, in 2021, we introduced the next generation of the instrument, the Timstoff Pro 2, and a brand new version of the instrument re-engineered specifically for ultra high sensitivity applications called the Timstoff STP uh, for single cell proteomics. On this slide, I want to remind you about what the unique features are of the TIMSTOF platform. Uh, first of all, it includes trapped ion mobility separation, which is what TIMS stand for, and that enables the parallel accumulation serial fragmentation method that was developed in collaboration with Professor Matthias Mann at the Max Planck Institute in Martinsried. And the way that works is shown here. In the first step, ions are accumulated, and this occurs this whole process occurs in a tunnel that's about 10 centimeters long, broken up into two tunnels by electrostatic potentials, Tim's, what we call Tim's Tunnel 1 and Tim's Tunnel 2. And through this tunnel is flowing a high velocity of gas because coming in with the ions is a lot of gas from the electrospray source, of course. And in step two, we transfer the first batch of ions over to the, the Tim's Tunnel 2, which we call our separation region. And Ions continue then to be accumulated and trapped in the accumulation region, uh, but in the separation region, they're trapped by a field gradient. And the, the ions that are have the largest uh, collision cross section, the biggest ones get pushed furthest up that hill by the gas flow. And the smallest ones feel the, the least force in the gas flow and stay back towards the beginning. And so in the third step, we start to elute those ions. So we they, these, this sorting out by size takes uh, just milliseconds, and then over the course of the next 100 milliseconds, we elute the ions by dropping this potential slowly. And from the potential at which they elute, we can calculate their collision cross sections. And when they elute, we measure their masses with high mass accuracy and excellent resolution of a QTOF analyzer. Um, and when that 100 millisecond ramp is done, we have the next batch of uh, ions already accumulated over here. So that's the parallel ion accumulation that's done in, in parallel with the elution. And it means we're not wasting any ions. Ions that are coming in from the electrospray source continue to be accumulated here while they're being analyzed here. And then in the next step, we transfer the next batch of ions over and do this again. But on the next time around, we know the collision cross section, the potential at which these ions are going to elute and we can select them for fragmentation according to their mass. So we know their collision cross section and mass, we can select them and we can measure their MSMS spectra. And we can do that for 10 to 15 precursors in each 100 millisecond ramp. So in about one second, we can measure the masses and the MSMS spectra of about 100, 100 to 150 precursors. So we're doing MSMS at the rate of 100 to 150 Hertz. And because of the chromatographic focusing effect that we're getting here, which is important to talk about at a separations conference, of course, the, these ions that would have eluded over the course of 100 milliseconds continuously are now focused into a tight ion packet that eludes in just a few milliseconds and uh, we get a, a big uh, sensitivity boost. So we can go faster with higher sensitivity uh, and that's really a revolution in mass spectrometry when you can do that. But that's not all. We get the collision cross sections. And this slide is meant to emphasize the importance of being what we call CCS aware. We can use these collision cross sections, not just as an additional dimension of separation, but also in identification workflows. And we can do that for 
peptides that we've measured in the past. We can create libraries of known collision cross sections. But in a seminal paper, Matthias Mann and, and co-workers showed that you can actually train a deep learning model to predict accurately the collision cross sections of peptides using a training set of a million experimental values that they measured. And so we believe that collision cross sections will become very important in proteomics uh, database searching software. And we have implemented something called TIMS score in our own software that you'll start to see more and more. So as I said, we've continued to improve the performance of the TIMSTOP Pro and with the TIMSTOP Pro 2, uh, which has a more robust and higher ion capacity TIMS tunnel, uh, in addition to some other hardware changes, uh, we, we can now do with 20 nanograms almost what we could do with 200 nanograms previously. So when the TIMSTOF Pro was introduced in 2017, it enabled people to work with 10 times less sample, 200 nanograms we could get with pe what people were getting with two micrograms injected previously, namely about 5,000 proteins identified and, and about 45,000 peptides in the 90 minute gradient. Now with 20 nanograms only injected, we can get between four and 5,000 peptides and over, I'm, I'm sorry, Sorry, between four and 5,000 proteins and over 30,000 peptides identified in a 30 minute gradient. And if we inject 200 nanograms now, we can get 6,000 proteins, 60,000 peptides in just a 60 minute gradient. So things are getting faster and we're able to see more from less sample with the TIMSTOF Pro 2. And we've main maintained the robustness of the instrument. Nothing has changed there. Uh, and there's a quote from Roman Fisher here, which says that he's been able to run more than 25,000 samples, of which about 5,000 have been non-depleted non plasma digests. We all know how dirty those can be, and they've had virtually zero downtime so far. Uh, so that summarizes where we are with DDA. Now, of course, we uh, another pillar of proteomics is becoming more and more proteomic, uh, more and more popular, I would say, are data independent analysis approaches. And uh, we got involved in a really exciting collaboration when Matthias Mann and, and Rudy Abersold were talking and realized that there would be a way to implement DIA on the TIMSTOF Pro that could take advantage of this passive separation. And that's called DIA passive. And the way that works is as we elute these ions, um, so this is the overall heat map. Now, as we elute the ions, we can set the quadrupole to isolate 25 mass unit windows of the plus two ions. And so we can do MSMS on this entire set of ions. And it's very efficient because while we're doing MS, MS on these, these are starting to elute. <clears throat> and so we don't throw any ions away. It's a very efficient way to do and sensitive way to do passive. So we're really excited about the passive. And in fact, it's becoming a method of choice in a lot of labs. Um, and the results are, are pretty amazing. You can see here uh, adapted from a recent paper, or I should say manuscript on bioarchive by Vadim Demetev and, and Marcus Rauser and others. Uh, they were able to identify and quantify 5,000 protein, HeLa proteins in a five minute gradient using, so that's using the 200 sample per day method on the EVOCEP1. And the idea five years ago that you could identify 5,000 proteins in a five minute gradient I think no one would even have dreamed of it. And now it's a reality. And with a hundred minute gradient, they were able to identify 11,000 proteins and quantify them in a complex mixture. And this is with a mixture of uh, HeLa and yeast. So here you can see the human and yeast proteins falling along the expected uh, ratio lines. <coughs> and these, these results are amazing. I, I should say that MaxQuant and Spectronaut all support our DIA passive data format and are getting uh, very good numbers as well. These are probably the highest, but you know, I expect all these packages to, uh, to give very good numbers uh, with DIA passive data. So we're really excited about that. And as I mentioned, it's becoming the, men the method of choice in, in a number of labs. And this is a paper from Catherine Wong's lab at the Beijing Medical Institute on a COVID-19 study where they were able, using a cohort that included healthy and non-COVID-19 lung infected patients to find biomarkers that were unique to immune suppression in, early, in the early stage of COVID-19, uh, which give us some ideas of how COVID-19 um, you know, affects the health of people and can be used to, uh, in, uh, to predict disease progression. So the last leg of proteomics that I haven't talked about yet is targeted proteomics. And 
the DDA and DIA are used for biomarker discovery and biological research where you want to identify as many things as you can and you don't, don't know necessarily what you're looking for in advance. And in targeted proteomics, you know what you're looking for and what you want to ID and quantify. And so the idea is to create a target list to make sure you hit what you're looking for and target it. And you know, you may have a few targets that you want to hit in lots of samples and maximize your throughput, or you may have hundreds or even thousands of targets that you want to target with the maximum sensitivity and dynamic range. And with PRM PASSIF, we realized that we could take advantage of the PASSIF technology again to increase the speed of PRM methods. So as uh, ions elute from the TIMS tunnel, we could target them not just according to their mass and their retention time, but also according to their collision cross-section. So with, Tim, with the TIMSTOF Pro 2, we've released a graphical user interface, a user-friendly way to set up these target lists, and you can integrate that with Skyline to create your methods and target, create your target lists that include uh, all three criteria, retention time windows, mass windows, and collision cross-section windows. And you can target an extremely high number of targets with no sensitivity loss or, or do very short gradients as well. So here's an example on the left showing the increased selectivity you get with the, the TIMS filtering. Here you can see we're trying to target this uh, and quantitate this Y13 ion, but there's a fragment from a co uh, an isobaric fragment from a co species. And you can see that would dramatically interfere with the peaks we're trying to quantitate on, but when you have high mobility filtering on, it's not a problem. That interference is entirely gone, as you see on the right. And that's in an experiment where we were targeting more than 200 targets in the 30-minute run. This is what the target heat map looks like. Each one of these boxes represents a mobility mass window where, the, where one of our targets is being hit. And um, this is from a paper, again, where we worked with uh, the lab of Gunnar Dittmar at the LIH, and Andre Lazor was one of the people key in this work, and it was published in Analytical Chemistry in 2021. And you can see with PRM PASSIF, we get good linear dynamic range over four orders of magnitude, uh, very good low detection limits down to the low atomal range for standards spiked into 100 nanogram hexyl lysate, and 186 aqua peptides were targeted here. And we could hit all of those in a 30 minute gradient with, with very, very good results. <clears throat> uh, this slide I don't want to spend too much time on because of time constraints, but it just shows that they were now able to create a target list that included some standards for, uh, they created C13 and 15 labeled standards for mutated peptides from carcinogenic cell lines and that they could detect those uh, isoforms uh, in the expected cell lines. And again, that's in analytical chemistry. So they could detect that with good sensitivity and you can read the details in the paper. So with that, uh, I'd like to uh, wrap up by summarizing the, that we now have uh, really great DDA passive performance. I didn't talk about the match between runs, but of course your match between runs with passive is now enhanced because you can match according not just to retention time and mass, but also collision cross section and that's supported in peaks and max quant. Uh, DIA passive is a great method that's being widely adopted now and has great data completeness and, and throughput. And PRM passive we think is gonna be a great way to do targeted proteomics. And we have a lot of development coming down the pipe there. Uh, Taser 1.0 is uh, something else that we introduced very recently. I want to mention briefly, it's the parallel search engine in real time. Uh, Taser, it uses a uh, GPU with 4,000 cores to speed up the database search so that the, the, your database search can be done actually as the acquisition is running. And when the acquisition is, is finished, your search is completed and you know how many you got. And that's really useful if you're doing method development because you get immediate feedback after your run on how, how your method development changed your ID rates. Uh, and it can be used as a quality control to stop your runs in case uh, your instrument stops performing, if your LC plugs or whatever, uh, and a quality control sample fails, you can feed that back into your data acquisition control and it will stop your run and you won't waste any pressured samples. And you can also receive an email letting you know you've got to go in the lab and check the problem. 
So the people that have this really love it. They say it really increases their productivity for method development and for uh, saving uh, samples from being injected if there's an issue. And we expect further revolutions to be provided via, via software updates that will actually enable real-time influence on the data acquisition to further enhance the performance of 4D proteomics. On this slide, I'd like to tell you about a really important recent product launch that we had at our Exceed event just over a month ago, the Timstoff SCP, which stands for Single Cell Proteomics. It's capable of true unbiased single cell 4D proteomics where we can detect proteins from, a from really from just a single cell. This was developed in collaboration with Professor Matthias Mann at the Mox, with his groups at the Max Planck Institute in Martinsried and at the Novo Nordisk, Novo Nordisk Foundation Center for Protein Research in Copenhagen. And we really liked the quote from Matthias where he said, I always said that single cell proteomics would not happen in my life, lifetime, but I'm happy to have been proven wrong. Uh, with this instrument, we added an additional stage of pumping and some ion optics that allow more ions into the source. So with the additional stage of pumping, we maintain the robustness of the instrument while allowing more ions in to get higher sensitivity. We get about a five times higher total ion current. And as you can see in the figure here, from just six cells, you still get a very good isotopic distribution of this particular peptide, and it goes down by about a factor of six, as you'd expect if you look at one cell. So I'm not going to say much more about this instrument because uh, I have the pleasure of speaking just before Professor Mon in this uh, seminar or webinar, and he'll be telling you a lot more about the capabilities of this instrument in his talk. So with this slide, I'd just like to emphasize that with the release of the Timstoff Pro 2 and the associated new software and methods released with it, we now have a complete and highly flex flexible suite of passive acquisition modes, uh, all the standard modes you would expect, uh, DDA, PASF, DIA, PASF, and PRM, PASF. And in addition, we've also implemented a collision cross-section assisted precursor selection called caps PSF that's particularly good for cross-linking mass spectrometry uh, using uh, enrichable cross-linkers developed in the lab of Professor Richard Scheltemeyer and, and uh, Albert Heck. Also like to emphasize that we're really excited about the trajectory of this technology. Uh, the number of, of uh, publications is growing exponentially. Uh, and we expect that to continue this year. We expect to see uh, hundreds of publications this year. Um, and the, you know, the, the adoption rate is, is really uh, gratifying to see, and we look forward to working with you, a lot of you in the proteomics community. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I think there might be an opportunity to take some questions. Thank you very much.